Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Too kind. I was almost thinking you're talking about someone else. Um, wow, what a day. Dear Ambassador Power, dear Secretary Donfrit, Secretary Bassett, uh, my friend Ambassador Ambrinidis, and so many ambassadors that we have with us here today. Dear Reverend Fathers, leaders, volunteers of each Ukrainian and American organization here, all Ukrainians, by birth, by blood, and by choice. Dear Americans, thank you so much for gathering here at the Lincoln Memorial to demonstrate your unwavering support and your unwavering solidarity with Ukraine and our people. When I listen to both anthems every time, I notice that they both focus on two traits which are not unique but the same for Ukraine and the US. Bravery and freedom. Love to freedom and readiness to fight for it. Bravery to defend homes and loved ones from the aggressive intruders. Today we mark one year of a full-fledged aggression and invasion and almost nine years since Russian Federation attacked Ukraine and became this unprovoked, totally unfair, and totally unjustified war. Before the 24th of February last year, we all knew that we will not surrender, that we will not give up, that we will fight for the civilizational choice we Ukrainians have made in so many centuries. And so many Ukrainians fought for this here in the United States while Ukraine was still under Soviet occupation. We decisively made the choice in 1991, and we have to remind everyone that in 1991, 98% of Ukrainians voted to be independent, voted to be free. Everywhere, including Crimea, Donetsk, Lugansk, Kharkiv, Lviv, everywhere. That choice we have defended in each free and fair elections, which we held since 1991. That choice, when Russian revisionists wanted to steal from us, Ukrainian people said resounding no on Maidan in 2004 and on Maidan in 2014. It's the choice for which our heavenly hundred paid the ultimate price. And it's the choice for which our defenders are paying the ultimate price today. Among us here, there are a number of soldiers, wounded soldiers and veterans. Thank you for your service. It's because of you I can stand here and talk. So today I stand here on the 365th day of the new reality in which we all live. The 365th day of brutal Russian war of the largest war since the World War II in our part of the planet. 365 days of horrible atrocities, war crimes, done to men, women, and children everywhere in Ukraine. 365 days of sorrow, losses, tragedies, and destruction. But we are not talking about that today. We are talking about 365 days of heroic, almost impossible fight. Ukrainians put defending our homes, loved ones, our independence, our dignity, our sovereignty, freedom and democracy. Fight that was made possible by leadership and bravery of our President Volodymyr Zelensky, of our troops, their mastery and devotion of every man and woman who serves on the battlefront today. Patriotism of our business, Ukrainian and American, small and large, continuing the fight everywhere in Ukraine, and resilience of all Ukrainians. 365 days of solidarity of American people and unparalleled support that we have received during this year from President Biden, from administration, from Congress on a very strong bipartisan basis, from every American citizen. Thank you, Americans, for each weapon, for each taxpayer's dollars of help, for each prayer, for each flag that we see outside of American houses, for each letter you write to your representatives and to your senators asking to stay the course, continue the support, 
Thank you and please do more. Historic visits from President Zelensky from Bakhmut to Washington, D.C. and historic visit of President Biden from Washington, D.C. to Kiev and Warsaw has proven the unbreakable ties between our nations, between the people, based on the two values, bravery and freedom. So we will always remember what the United States has done to us in this, helping us to defend our country. 365 days, of course, also of European family devoted solidarity. When European Union and each of the European Union states not only opened their borders, their homes, their hearts for us, but also provided unprecedented support and welcomed us as a candidate to the European Union while we are fighting for the European values on the battlefield. We used to say that you never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. Being strong and fighting for our country is the only cho choice you have, we have now. And we are strong. And Ukrainians are united from our president to each of the 40 millions back home and to many more millions everywhere in the world. We already won when we didn't allow Russia to take Kiev in three days. We already won when Mariupol stood longer than any besieged city and allowed others to prepare to defend. We already won when we liberated Kyiv Oblast, Kharkiv Oblast and Kherson. We already won when we survived this winter when Russians, not being able to fight on the battlefield, decided to destroy all the civilian and energy infrastructure in Ukraine. We stand here in the place where Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream, a historic phrase for not only Americans, but everyone who fights for freedom. And we Ukrainians have a dream. We have a dream of how this war will end in victory of Ukraine and all free world, in justice served to all responsible from Putin to the last soldier, Russian soldier war criminal on the battlefield, to all Ukrainian, in all Ukrainians returning home, and in inspiring post-war renovation of the country, leapfrogging into successful, prosperous European Ukraine, member of European Union and NATO, and key to resolving so many problems that Russia created for the world. So we have not only dream, but we have a plan, which is very simple plan, which we had from the day one. More weapons, more support to Ukraine, and more sanctions to Russia. And we just have to be brave, brave stay united, help each other more, and win this together. So God bless you all who came today. God bless our troops. God bless America. And of course, Slava Ukraini. Yeah.